The Drukathi, an ancient extraterrestrial race, once thrived within the vast expanse of the Milky Way galaxy. Renowned for their awe-inspiring and highly advanced technologies, the Drukathi reached a pinnacle of power that even instilled fear in the formidable Yautja. Despite their departure from the galaxy, the legacy of the Drukathi endures. Of particular intrigue is the symbiotic relationship the Drukathi maintained with the enigmatic xenomorph species. Evidently, the Drukathi not only engaged in breeding these creatures, but also harnessed them for their own mysterious purposes. In this video, we delve into a comprehensive exploration of the Drukathi, focusing on key aspects such as their distinctive appearance and characteristics, the groundbreaking technologies that set them apart, and the intriguing tapestry of their ancient history. Join us as we unravel the enigma surrounding the Drukathi and uncover the fascinating facets of their existence. The Drukathi, majestic beings of extraterrestrial origin, manifested a mesmerizing physiognomy characterized by six limbs, four robust legs providing them with a dignified stance, and two more slender arms that bespoke an elegance inherent to their otherworldly form. The contours of their cranium exuded a peculiar canid grace, a distinctive feature that set them apart in the cosmic menagerie. In the realm of speculative musings, Karen Snedden, who was the science officer aboard the deep space mining vessel, DSMO Marion, ventured into the domain of theories suggesting that these regal beings, in their mature state, stretched at least a remarkable 12 feet in length. The mere thought of such majestic creatures traversing the cosmic expanses invokes a sense of awe and wonder, as if their presence in the galactic tapestry left an indelible mark. Alternative scientific perspectives have envisioned the Drukathi as arachnid-like entities, endowed with a minimum of six limbs, pallid skin, oversized jet-black eyes, and razor-sharp pointed teeth. These fantastical beings are conceived to possess highly aggressive tendencies, unleashing formidable strength upon anything that crosses their path. Delving into the realm of dietary inclinations, the Drukathi, akin to the xenomorphs, are primarily carnivorous exhibiting an intriguing versatility by consuming virtually any organic matter within their purview. Their reputation precedes them, as their predatory and aggressive behavior mirrors the ferocity associated with their alien counterparts. Turning our attention to the mysterious aspects of Drukathi reproduction, despite their status as a highly advanced civilization, their mating and reproductive processes bear a striking resemblance to the intricate dance of spiders. Positioned at the rear of their biomechanical abdomen, both male and female reproductive organs play a crucial role in the ballet of procreation. The male, akin to terrestrial counterparts, deposits a liquid resembling human sperm into the female genital opening. Intriguingly, the females, often surpassing males in stature at an impressive 12 feet or more, swiftly commence the incubation process. Within a short period, a multitude of biomechanical eggs hatch, releasing a horde of Drukathi offspring. A week later, these progenies emerge, ready to embark on their journey through the expanse. However, the tapestry of Drukathi reproduction reveals a macabre facet known as sexual cannibalism. In certain instances, females of the Drukathi species indulge in the grisly practice of devouring their mates after procreation. This act, whether for sustenance or reproductive strategy, adds a chilling layer to the enigma surrounding the Drukathi's existence, intertwining the beauty and brutality inherent in the dance of life. The enigmatic technology that comprised the Drukathi spacecraft on LV-178 defied the conventional norms of extraterrestrial engineering. 
Rather than being a mere conglomeration of mechanical components, the vessel's structure exhibited an uncanny organic elegance. Karen Sneddon's keen observations hinted at a fascinating revelation. The ship seemed to have been grown biologically, an ethereal symbiosis of life and technology. The tendrils of the Drukathi's advanced biotechnological prowess extended even to their cosmic kin, the Rage, whose spacecraft mirrored the otherworldly essence of their predecessors. Described as living entities, these vessels took on a bizarre, slug-like appearance, defying the rigid lines of traditional spacecraft design. It was as though the very essence of life pulsated through the veins of the metal and circuitry. Intriguingly, the seamless fusion of biology and technology hinted at the Drukathi's remarkable mastery of biotechnology. This notion was further underscored by the existence of the enigmatic phase, a living organism that the Yauchia claimed was the handcrafted creation of the Drukathi. The very essence of phase remains shrouded in mystery, a testament to the Drukathi's profound understanding of life's intricate tapestry. Adding another layer to this cosmic conundrum, the phase was discovered nestled within the confines of the Drukathi Dyson sphere-like construct. An unknown alien life form, the phase embodies the culmination of the Drukathi's biotechnological prowess a testament to their ability to weave life into the very fabric of the cosmos. The enigmatic Drukathi remain veiled in a shroud of mystery, with scant details emerging about their nature and historical tapestry. What does transpire is a testament to their extraordinary advancement as a spacefaring civilization one that predated humanity's journey by countless millennia. The yawning chasm of time separates us from these enigmatic beings, leaving their narrative obscured in the annals of history. According to the Yauchia, custodians of interstellar wisdom, the Drukathi departed the Milky Way eons ago, venturing towards the uncharted realms of another galaxy. However, the Yauchas' perspective on these ancient entities is far from reverential. Rather, it is tinged with a palpable contempt. The Yaucha, formidable hunters and warriors in their own right, harbor a deep-seated fear of the Drukathi, deeming them malevolent beings of immense power. In the cryptic dance of interactions, the Drukathi encountered the Xenomorph, and a riveting chapter unfolded. Far from passive observers, the Drukathi actively engaged with the xenomorph species, cultivating a fascination that led them to partake in the intricate art of breeding these otherworldly creatures. This symbiotic relationship between the Drukathi and the xenomorphs adds yet another layer of intrigue to the tapestry, leaving us to ponder the motives and implications of such an alliance between two forces. In the annals of 2159, the Drukathi unveiled their elusive presence within the confines of their vessel on LV-178, courtesy of the intrepid crew aboard the DSMO Marion. A poignant tale unfolded as the ship bore the scars of an ill-fated attempted takeoff, crashing perilously just outside a sprawling city, a testament to the Drukathi's extraterrestrial origins. The wreckage, a grim tableau frozen in time, bore witness to a catastrophic event. The derelict vessel, a macabre nursery for xenomorphs, revealed a harrowing narrative of attempted containment. Amidst the remnants of the ship, an abundance of ovomorphs, the ominous offspring of dog-like aliens, stood as a chilling testament to Aventure Gonau Rai. The Marion's crew postulated a grim hypothesis. The Drukathi's valiant struggle against the Cynomorph on Slout culminated in the decision to shoot down the vessel, a desperate measure to prevent the extraterrestrial scourge from infiltrating other planetary realms. A colossal wall-like structure, a last-ditch effort to barricade the Xenomorph threat, loomed between the settlement and the crashed starship. A desperate bid to contain the encroaching menace, 
it ultimately crumbled under the relentless onslaught. The city, once an emblem of Drukathi civilization, fell prey to the nightmarish tide of xenomorphs, spelling the demise of the Drukathi population on LV-178. These abandoned ruins, frozen in time and etched with the scars of otherworldly warfare, whispered of a race ions older than humanity. The shattered remnants of their once mighty city stood as a silent testament to the relentless march of time, painting a somber portrait of a civilization erased from the heavenly canvas by the harbingers of extraterrestrial terror. Centuries hence, the Drukathi ruins on LV-178 resurfaced on the radar of the Wayland yutani Corporation, as they sensed the presence of xenomorphs still lingering within the ancient remnants. Promptly, a company response team descended upon the site, plunging into a comprehensive exploration of both the forsaken ship and the desolate city. The inexorable tide of xenomorphs, however, unfolded as predicted, overwhelming the human expedition and forcing a hasty retreat, leaving the ruins silent once more. In the continuum of time, the founders, a dissident group of human scientists electing to depart human space in search of a better life, free from the constraints of human society, stumbled upon an artificial planet, like construct of Drukathi origin, a trove of advanced biotechnology and preserved xenomorph specimens awaited within, guarded by a genetically engineered entity known as the Phase. Crafted by the hand of the Drukathi, the Phase assumed the role of custodian, meticulously tending to the technological legacy left behind by its creators. The founders seized upon these discoveries, leveraging the newfound knowledge to fortify their own technological prowess in ominous preparation for an impending invasion against the human sphere. The repercussions of this invasion reverberated with cataclysmic intensity nearly culminating in the utter annihilation of human civilization. Within the orchestration of events, the Yaucha discerned a clandestine manipulation, asserting that the Drukathi themselves orchestrated the catastrophe. According to Yaucha lore, this intricate plot unfolded with the surreptitious intention of stunting humanity's ascension to advanced technological heights, safeguarding equilibrium against the specter of human progress.